Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. Today I just want to do a really quick video and that is fixing an error that I found in our Mario Run game that we've been creating. Now the error that I found isn't a syntax error or a compiler error or anything like that. It's actually a logic error which deals with the gameplay and how the gameplay works. And so let's get started and I'll show you what the error is and how to fix it. All right, so here we have our project open in Unity, and the error that we've been having is dealing with the wall jump. Now, when I go ahead and hit play, you can see that we have our character, and as he's walking, when I click the screen, sometimes he won't do a wall jump, even though I'm kind of mashing the left mouse button in order to get him to jump, which is a problem because you don't want your players to be playing your game and have it not work properly. You want the gameplay to be as smooth as possible. And so we're going to go ahead and fix this error so that anytime your main character is touching the wall, you can just click the screen and he'll automatically do a wall jump after that. So in order to fix this error, what we need to do is open our player controller script in Visual Studios or Mono Develop. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. All right, once you have your player controller script open in Visual Studios, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to our wall jump function, which is right here. Now, our wall jump function was created in a previous video of this playlist, and if you've missed that video, or if you don't know what the wall jump function does, you can go ahead and watch the video in the top right corner of the screen, or if you've already seen that video, we can just continue on. Now inside this function, we have this if statement, which is checking for three different conditions. The first condition is this exclamation point, my controller dot is grounded, which that condition is essentially checking to see that our player is not touching the ground. So he's, he's somewhere in the air. And then this second condition, and really this third condition, both of these together, are checking to see if the object that our main character has collided with is a vertical wall. Because if it is, then we want to allow our player to then do a wall jump. Once all these conditions are true, then we continue into this if statement. And we have another if statement where we check to see if the player gives the input of get button down fire one, which is, in other words, the left mouse click or can also be any touch on the screen if it's a mobile device. Now the get button down means that it is the very first frame or instance of the player clicking the left mouse button. Now the problem that we're running into and the reason why our main character only sometimes jumps off the wall is because this condition being one single frame is very unlikely to be true at the very same time that our player first collides with another wall and then meets all these other conditions. So in other words, having this narrow window in order to make something happen in our game is not working for us. And so how we can fix this is by changing this if input dot get button down fire one to if input dot get button fire one. So I'm going to delete that down. And what this does is it means that anytime our player is holding down the left mouse button, we will then allow our players to do a wall jump. But this creates another issue that because our anytime our player is clicking the left mouse button, that means that all they have to do is hold the mouse button down and if they collide with the wall they'll then jump off of it. And so I'm going to go ahead and save this so that I can demonstrate this additional problem that we've created. So let's go back to Unity and now when I hit play all I have to do is jump and then hold down the left mouse button and my main character will then automatically jump off any wall that he collides with, which could be okay if you feel like that's a good game mechanic. But personally, I feel like making it so that the players don't have to click the screen in order to jump every single time they want to jump is not the best game mechanic. 
And so in order to fix this, we need to add a little more to our script. But before we go back to our script, I want to play th through our game one more time. And this time, pay attention to how smooth our wall jump is. And I will click the mouse button every time I want to do a wall jump. So here we have our player and he's walking. Now when I click to jump and then I click again and again and again and again, it actually looks a hundred times, a billion times better because our main character is jumping off the wall in the very instance that our player clicks the mouse button. So now that we've fixed that problem of having to button mash the left mouse button in order to get our player to do a wall jump, let's go ahead and fix the auto jump when players are holding down the left mouse button. So let's go back to our script in Visual Studios. Alright, so in order to fix the auto wall jump when players are just holding down the mouse button, we need to add a boolean variable that we're going to toggle from true to false depending on whether or not our player has already done a wall jump or a jump in general or if they've lift off the mouse button. And so let's scroll up to the top and then underneath our wall jump variable, our private quaternion my rotation, let's add a new variable. This is going to be a public and then a bool, which is a true or false value. And then let's go ahead and call this has jumped. So if they have jumped, then it's going to be true. And if they haven't jumped, then it's going to be false. Let's scroll back down to our wall jump function. And now what we need to do is in this if statement where we're checking for the player input of get button fire one, we're going to and this condition with has jumped equals false. So we're going to say exclamation point has jumped. So if has jumped is false, then we allow our player to do a wall jump if they click the mouse button. Now what we need to do inside this if statement is then set has jumped equal to true. This will allow it so that our player then is not allowed to do a second wall jump after the first wall jump while holding down the left mouse button. But this also creates another problem we're not quite done yet because this is making it so that our player is only allowed to do one wall jump ever and then we never allow our players to do another wall jump. But in order to fix this, what we need to do is scroll up and create an update function where we're then going to call uh, input of get button up fire one and then set has jumped back to false. And so we already have a fixed update function, but I'm going to create a plain update function. Now, in the update function, what we need to do is check to see if the player input, so if input dot get button, and then we want up, get button up, like that. And then we're going to call fire one, on pass fire one as the parameter to the get button up function. And if the player lifts up on the mouse button, we will then set has jumped back equal to false. Now there's one last thing that we need to do in order to finish fixing this logic error and that is that n right now when the player clicks and holds the left mouse button after doing just an initial normal jump off the ground if they collide with a wall a v the very first time they collide with the wall they'll then do an automatic wall jump. This is because we're not setting this has jumped equal to true while doing a normal jump off the ground. And so what we need to do is find our plain jump function. And here we have where we're calling it in the fixed update function. But if I scroll down here, we have the actual jump function that we've initialized. Now inside this function, we have this if statement where we're checking for the player input get mouse button zero which is essentially the same thing as input.getButtonFire1. They're just different ways of accessing the same input. Now, inside this if statement, we then have another if statement, and this one is where we're checking to see if the player is grounded. 
Now we only want to set has jumped equal to true if our player is grounded, because if he's not grounded, if he's in the air, and we set it equal to true, then there won't be, we won't be able to do any wall jump. And so what I'm going to then do is inside this if statement, my controller dot is grounded, I'm going to set has jumped equal to true. So let's go ahead and save this and go back to Unity where we can then test our logic. So once inside Unity, I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And here you can see now that we have our character and he's walking along. And if I click and hold the left mouse button, he'll then not do a wall jump. But if I click and then click again, we can then do a wall jump every time I click the mouse. Now I'm going to show you a few other things. If I then click and jump and then click and hold, he doesn't do a wall jump. And so we've fixed both those logic errors. Now there's one other logic error that I found, and that is with the plane jump off the ground. If I click and hold the mouse button, then when I collide with the ground again, our player will continue to do uh, ground jumps. And so if we really want our player to only ever jump when he gives the input of clicking the mouse button or the screen, then we need to fix this logic error as well, which should be pretty easy considering that we've now created this has, has jumped variable. So I'm going to go back to Visual Studios, and it should be somewhere in the jump function that we need to add another condition. And I believe if we set another condition inside this if statement where we're checking to see if the player is grounded, where we say if my controller dot is grounded and has jumped equals false, so I'm going to put an exclamation point in front of it, this should do the trick. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and go back to Unity. And now when we play our game, so I'm going to hit play, and then as our player hits the ground, I can then jump and hold the mouse button, and when he collides with the ground, he doesn't jump again. But if I lift up on the mouse button and then click it again, he does another jump. And so every time I click the mouse button, he does jump. But every time I click and hold the mouse button, he does not jump. And you can see right there, we also have our variable jump. When I just tap the mouse and then tap and hold the mouse, he jumps at those variable heights, which, which was a really cool feature that we were able to create in a previous video. Yeah. So that's everything that we wanted to cover in this video. We were able to diagnose this logic error and find where it was occurring in our script. And then we were able to add additional conditions and code in order to fix our logic error. And now we have a much smoother game where our character can do wall jumps without the player having to button mash the left mouse button. Now, we hope you enjoyed this video and that it all made sense. If there was anything that was confusing or hard to understand, you can go back and watch this video again, or you can leave us any questions you have in the comments below. Make sure that you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.